Hello everyone and welcome back to Sam and Max. At the minute we're about to go down with the lightning. We're gonna go down and uh, yeah, that's what I thought it was. We've got paperweight's office down here. That's interesting. Ah! Holy Oak, Massachusetts. If I remember my field guide for otherworldly incursions correctly, that tentacle's a flagellum from the dark dimension. I'm not gonna ask how he knows that. Hey, you. Who, me? Don't get killed with me, wise guy. What are you doing in the museum after dark? I'm Sam. I'm with the Freelance Police. Freelance Police, eh? I heard a lot about you guys. A lot. I'm Sal, museum's security guard. You must be looking into all the freaky shenanigans going on around here tonight, huh? Yeah. Well, feel free to poke around. But right now, you gotta do something about this pile of trash. That's not trash. That's my partner. Partner, trash, potato, potato. If it's not up and moving in the next few minutes, I'm tossing that smelly lump of guts into the incinerator. Incinerator? Yeesh. Fine, Sal, I'll pick up his body. I think I know where I can stuff it. I'd better find a way to get Max's body moving before Sal chucks it into an incinerator. Dog man, where do you think you're going? I'm uh, just looking for the snack foods exhibit. No one leaves here. It's Gonkape's orders. Why? We're supposed to be on the lookout for uh, Sam. That's it, Sam. Are you Sam? No, my name is uh, Tyrone. Sam's that guy. Tis we. I've arrived at the world famous museum of mostly natural history. And look, a cute little animatronic monkey. <laughs> Mahila de Skunkape, I've successfully neutralized the one known as Sam. Yes. Describe him. Pink, hairless, difficult to place accent. That's not Sam, you fool. Now don't bother me again until you find Sam. Apparently that uh, wasn't Sam. Oh well, uh, happy hunting. Thank you, Tyrone. <laughs> okay. It says it's an information desk, but I feel dumber just looking at it. Museum of Mostly Natural History Guided Tour. Ah, an audio guide that attempts to make sense of the nonsensical museum displays. I should tape one of these for our office. Behold, the dread wonder of Yogg Sagoth, overfiend of the Dark Dimension. Yeah, I'm glad my great grandpa stopped that transdimensional beauty from manifesting in the east side. Yep. Tapestry of Yogg Sagoth, overfiend of the Dank Dimensions, on loan from the East Village chapter of the Knights of Yogg Sagoth. He doesn't look so tough. Don't say that. Mm. Hey, it's a Moai head. How's it hanging, big guy? Fine, be that way. I was expecting him to sort them. Inexplicable object of unknown provenance. I think that's a nutcracker. Is that a nutcracker? Could be a nutcracker. Canis erectus. This freakish tooth, dating from the late Fumerian era, is thought to represent an evolutionary dead end of heavyset man dog hybrids. This night was bad enough, but now my distant ancestors are getting insulted by pasty faced anthropologists. Yeah, talk to Sal again. Sal! Keep it down, will ya? This is a museum, not a locker room. Nice headphones. Listening to the game? Or maybe some Black Flag? Now, these are my official museum guard emergency headphones. I gotta wear these so that Mr. Paperweight can tell me where to go in case of a security emergency. Of course, I haven't heard from him in a while. He must be busy up there with that space gorilla guy. Space 
don't look now, but there's a scandalously clad intergalactic despot running roughshod through your museum. You mean General Skunkape? He's an A1 buttwad, all right. But what are you gonna do? Mr. Paperweight's rolled out the red carpet for him and his minions. Don't you think you should alert the authorities? What? Lose my job? Paperweight. Any idea what that paperweight loser is doing in the planetarium? Hey, don't be calling Mr. Paperweight a loser. He's a stand-up guy who took me in and gave me a job. He's not here, you know. Nah, I got no idea what that loser's up to. Heck, I can't even understand half the things he tells me over the headphones. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, why is that name so familiar? Wait a minute. Stinkies used to have a fry cook named Sal. Yep, that'd be me. A six-foot-tall cockroach working at Stinkies? That's shocking! No, wait. What's that thing that's the complete opposite of shocking? Would you mind not throwing my little buddy into the museum's incinerator? What can do, Sam? If Mr. P finds another corpse strewn about all willy-nilly on the exhibit floor, he's gonna kick my thorax right to the unemployment office. You say your friend's still alive? You better get him moving. See ya, Sal. Careful out there, Sam. This place is cuckoo tonight. This all reminds me of my great granduncle Eustatius. And my great granduncle Eustatius. What's this way? Not much. And yeah. To witness the final stage of the coming apocalypse, turn the hourglass. Okay. I did not see that coming. Okay, uh, let's see if we can actually... Welcome to the Museum of Mostly Natural History. My name is Anton Pepperweight, and I'll be your narrator on this self-guided tour today. Let us begin. Please make your way to the Melozoic Era exhibit in the center of the main floor. No. Although it lasted for only seven weeks during the late summer of 56 million BC, the Melozoic Era produced an incredible explosion of evolutionary diversity, most of which was quickly erased by less ridiculous creatures. Let's go to the middle of the floor. Poyosaurus Henway. It's a dragon unicorn. It's a telltale trail of Grandpa Stinky's brain preserving demon broth. Okay, uh... I'd better find a way to get Max's body moving before Sal chucks it into an incinerator. Assaulting the city. Humanity has long pondered about the eventual fate of the Earth. 
Today, thanks to sophisticated supercomputers, scientists have determined that the world will end in the year 2015, as giant monsters, environmental disasters, and political apathy combine to turn our world into an unlivable hellhole shortly before the sun unexpectedly goes nova. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that, yes. The world will end in 2015 from monsters, climate, and this one going over. That was one, wasn't it? <laughs> what point was that? I think that was five. Turn the hourglass to witness the Earth's final moments, as predicted by accredited apocalypticians. So, we've done the first six. Is there anything else I can do? Anything back here? We'd sign. The Osmunda Kincadium, a.k.a. the Boring Fern, possessed no interesting qualities whatsoever. That's not nice. I'm sure it was very interesting once you got to know it. This again. Neolithic mustache clippers? No, they, they still want mustache clippers. Yeah, there's nothing in the middle either. Somehow I doubt they're gonna lure in the jaded thugs of today with laser light shows. Not enough despinings to hold a young person's attention. Coming soon, a brief history of bad ideas in transportation. I hope Max's brain and body are reunited by the time this exhibit opens. He loves tooling around in comically unviable vehicles. Look at that banner. Good thing Max isn't here. Edutainment sends him into an atavistic rage. Although the Hindenburg met its fiery demise in 1937, its sister ship, the Aeroschwein, is still in operation today and was a stunt double in the 1968 musical Let's All Go For A Ride In My Beautiful Balloon. So that's where that song came from. Else. What's that, that about the Toxic paleness, a prehistoric and virulent Maybe. form of poison ivy, was seven times as irritating as its modern counterpart. Primitive life forms were often driven into fits of howling, scratching rage by the merest sampling of T. paleness's secretions. It's hard to believe something that pretty could be so annoying. It's too bad Max's mighty psychic brain isn't here. There's all sorts of new phone numbers on this courtesy phone. Tapestry of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the dank dimensions, on loan from the East Village chapter of the Knights of Yog Sagoth. He doesn't look so tough. Okay. That's everything down here. Let's actually go back in here. Please don't touch, play on or around the Pharaoh's brain. I question the wisdom of this sign. Normally, the code of the freelance policeman frowns on stealing ancient brains, but desperate times call for icky measures. Ew, it's warm and pulsing and wriggly. I don't know whether to be repulsed or use it as a neck massager. Ew, a neck massager. Yeah. Guess where I'm now going? Okay, 
everybody. Maybe this carefully preserved gray matter will get Max's body moving, or at least twitching and drooling unnervingly. Hello. Anybody in there? No, but I get that a lot. I'm Sam. Oh, my! A new body! And it's so energetic! That's probably one of Max's sugar rushes. You'll just want to ride him out until you get used to him. Well, I suppose you want some sort of tedious boon in return for rescuing our spirit from the shadowy realms, yes? Well, if it's not too much trouble, Your Majesty, I could use some help retrieving Max's brain from a couple of world-conquering Nimrods. I believe we can aid you in your quest, but where will my brain go after we've restored this Max? Hmm. Well, if everything goes as planned, I suppose you can take your pick between an ethnic sorcerer and a super-powered space gorilla. A gorilla? <gasps> that does sound promising. Very well, we shall grant your boon. It shouldn't be too much trouble with all these toys of the gods secreted in this fuzzy little body. Toys of the gods? Do you have the gift? Is that what they're calling it these days? My people always called it the Curse of Horus. Ungrateful wretches. Neat. If you've got creepy brain powers, this rescue's gonna be a walk in the park. Ready to roll? Lead on, barbarian. Ah, oh, the Arrow of Power. But where is the Disk of Madness? Or the Orb of Unending Bounciness? We are, haven't found them yet, but here, take a gander at this. Ah, the wondrous Essence Thief! How well I remember disguising myself as a palm frond to observe the forbidden rituals at the Temple of Adolescence. You tyrannical scamp. Hmm. I want to play with this. <laughs> Of course, this will probably be the first time I've used a rhino plastic. Can we turn into socks so so No? Well, so now that the pharaoh has an image of a rhino plasty, he can turn into that object. You can select the lump of rhinoplasty to activate the shape-shifting power. How droll! A talking skull! I'm sure that will be useful. I'm sorry, I can help them. Rhinoplasty! That was fun. Look at that. Let's see. Future vision. Hey! Ouch! My thorax! My beautiful thorax! Ouch! Who'd want to pummel a nice bug guy like so? Hey, Max, check this out. It turns out that Lady Godiva was a dude. Ooh, icky! Well, either I managed to return Max's brain to his body in the future, or you're destined to learn a killer Max impression. Let's move on. Definitely. Nope. I'm not touching anything and it's spinning. There we go. What in the name of Gorgar? In my experience, it's rarely a good idea to poke a space gorilla in the eyes. That's what lackeys are for, Sam. True. But that gives us some some help. Let me have the phone. Teleportation. So what can we do at the minute? Nothing, but we do have him back, so let's go to one. We kinda have him back. I'm 
showed me the phone. Hmm. Hey, Your Majesty, check out these spiffy phone numbers. Phone numbers? Ah, uh, hieroglyphics to activate the translocation toy. We always wondered how that device worked. It probably would have helped if the ancient astronauts who taught you how to build pyramids had left behind a few telephones. Say, one of those phone numbers is brand new. Oh, okay, I think... I think we have a new phone number. Teleportation. Let's see. Office. Info desk. Egypt exhibit. Upper level. Office. So this is Paperweight's office. What a dump! <laughs> Someone's coming. Why have you left the planetarium? That intergalactic bully is driving me bananas, and his minions are a threat to my beautiful museum. Can't you do something? Get a grip on yourself, man. Can't you see our long struggle to gather the toys is almost over? You think I don't know that? I've been dreaming of this second chance for decades! Then stop whining and get back in there! Yes, sir, Dr. Norrington. Right away, Dr. Norrington. Norrington. His imperious attitude puts me in mind of a loot teacher we fed to my crocodiles for correcting my divine embouchure. You know, Max's patter is a lot less... Violent? Multisyllabic. Then. Check it out, Your Majesty. An insanely detailed top-down drawing of the city. What a remarkable illusion of depth. Oh yeah, you didn't have perspective and vanishing points in your time, did you? Of course we did! Why, we had a whole chamber full of perspectives and a headdress adorned with vanishing points and... and... SHUT UP! That transportation exhibit is bound to be fascinating. We enjoy reveling in the failures of lesser beings. Paperweight's quite the reader. A lowly scribe, then. There's a lot of stuff on socks to goth. Your Highness? Yes. You like your hair? So, Your Highness, you impressed by the 21st century yet? Oh, most definitely. Though we do feel a bit out of our element. Don't worry. Once we teach you a few crude gestures and get rid of the whole talking in the plural thing, you'll fit right in. After all this is over, we'll all head to Broadway and take in a show. Oh, bread and circuses! Are there gladiator fights? Actually, it's mostly a bunch of people dressed up as cats singing about wanting to break loose, and then a chandelier falls on them. I've got to find a way past Cosmic Gorilla Guy and Dr. Strange Accent. Hmm. Early in our reign, we found out that a minor vizier and a captain of the guard were conspiring against us. We could have wiped them out with a thought, but it amused us to turn them against each other instead. That's the plan, but we want to know how. How did a kid like you get to become Pharaoh? Did your daddy Pharaoh die when you were young? Oh no, our dad was a sandal maker. We became Pharaoh after we stumbled upon the toys of the gods while stealing coins from a tomb. The toys awakened latent abilities within us, granting us the power to cast the royal family into the Nile and reshape the entire kingdom in our now divine image. Now there's a heartwarming rags to riches story. Definitely. Your brain. How'd your brain stay alive all these years anyway? Before our death, we left strict instructions with our viziers to pickle our brain in a special solution of crocodile tears and ground ibis beaks. And that kept your brain alive? Don't be ridiculous. It was our special gift that kept our brain alive. Duh. Let's do you again. Let's if the toys the made you so powerful, how'd you end up as a pickled brain in a jar? During our reign, there were always a few troublemakers who, impervious to our divine powers, rebelled against our benevolent but firm dictates. 
We suspect one of them finally snuck past our defenses. Again. Hold any grudges? Sam, that's all in the past. Even if we did hold an eternal grudge against the mystery assassins who deposed us all those centuries ago, it's not as if we can do anything about it now, right? Oh, uh, right. Maybe. <laughs> Isn't that's it for that, guys? Let's roll. Aha! Uh -huh. We shall roll like a wheel, yes? You Unit. sure know your obscure cultural references, Your Majesty. Roll! Roll! Word. Can we go by the front door? It's locked. What kind of paranoid freak keeps his door locked from the inside? I locked all my slaves inside my birthday pyramid after they finished building it. Paperweight's not a slave. Are you sure? Let's see. Office Let's get to the Egyptian exhibit. It's not, it's not the same without the Wee! More boring. Uh, come on, Sam. I want to see something. <laughs> I was gonna look and see if I could take anything from here, but this will do just as good. So now we have a zip. Whee! Be careful, Your Highness. You're full of hydrogen and dangerously unstable. Oh, lighten up! I have! Whee! Mentioned that he loved it so much. I still look up and down. I want to go into the tapestry. Damn it. He might not be able to do that. Is uh, the Pharaoh. Tapestry of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the Dank Dimensions, on loan from the East Village chapter of the Knights of Yog Sagoth. He doesn't look so tough. In fact, he looks kind of flammable. Exactly! We need to kind of put it on fire! Behold, the dread wonder of Yog Sagoth, overfiend of the Dark Dimension! Creepy. It's a good thing our forefathers kept this guy from schlepping into our dimension, or we'd probably be seeing that on our currency by now. Let's see if we can talk to the body. Would you look at that? I wonder if it's on fire. How can we say it's on fire? Neat. That's something. Okay, I can only look at the zeppelin. Can you look at the mysterious item again? See if that's anything. I'm just going around to see if anything's changed. Byzantine belly button waxer? <laughs> that's a good one. You know what, guys? For now, I'm going to have a think about this and marvel at the fact that we've got a pharaoh in Max's body. So, guys. I shall speak to you all later. We've made some good headway today. Well, I think we've made some good headway anyway. We now have a brain for the body. That's always a good thing. So guys, as usual, I shall see you all later. Leave a like or comment below just to let me know I'm doing good. And I shall speak to you all next time. Bye!